great. So uh, uh, I'll introduce a little bit about us. Uh, we're a product engineering company, and we're uh, one of our uh, large implementations happens to be retail stores, uh, as one of the office suppliers, largest office suppliers in the US. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, explore Apex to help them uh, minimize OOS. Now, any any ideas of what OOS is? It's a term. It's not a standard term. But, okay, yeah. <clears throat> um, so uh, out of stock, and uh, all of us really wonder uh, why. We, why am I really talking about retail? Uh, nowadays, it's just uh, I open my phone. I go to some online uh, store, online Amazon or Flipkart. But why am I really interested in pitching this use case to all of you, and even to our customers, right? The reality is that overall, we are having like a $3.9 trillion industry, which is still a um, com combination of uh, the brick and mortar, click and mortar, and the online only platforms, okay? And 94% uh, of the sales are still generated in store. Now that may be a few percent up or down, that 94, maybe 92 today. Uh, but still, we are at a huge chunk where we still need to focus and retain our retail customers. 65% uh, of the online shoppers really say that, hey, if I do get a physical experience in the retail, uh, I would like to go for a retail-based shopping. Yeah. Um, now, just some figures, you know, I, I, I hope uh, the, these are the sales. Um, now, Walmart, Kroger, um, Costco, Home Depot, uh, Target, so one of, so we also happen to work with uh, one of these largest customers. Um, but you really see that Amazon is there, uh, Best Buy is there, um, but Apple is, is both. Uh, but we're really seeing large volumes of sales and revenues generated by br brick and mortar stores. Uh, Walmart, for example, its strength is the brick and mortar stores, not only in US, but all across the globe. Okay. Um, so really, uh, why, why do retailers, and another ch uh, reason for choosing uh, this topic today is retail is a very uh, slow moving industry, I would say, when it comes to technology. Uh, their adoption of technology is uh, by far, we've seen uh, we need they need a lot of convincing uh, to move, uh, and sometimes it's at the cost of their own business. Okay, uh, so uh, some stats <coughs> worldwide: uh, the out-of-stock percent is eight uh, percent. You go go to a retail store with a uh, list. You want to buy ten items. You want to buy twenty items. It's possible that one or two are out of stock. Uh, they're not available. Uh, so uh, that really translates to a huge loss in sales, a loss, loss of revenue from a lot of customers. Now, these are the two kind of losses that we are really talking about here. One is the tangible losses, and one are the intangible losses. Uh, tangible are the ones that we are really able to measure. These statistics will give you some ideas. Um, but it is not. Is it only sales loss that we're talking about? Um, any other idea, ideas of what other losses could retail stores be looking at? Customer loyalty, everybody has a phone. Just go online, see, order. Uh, anything else? Anything from a store perspective? Uh, that's that's going to be there anyways. Um, What's your question? Uh, my question is, what? Uh, these are the direct sales losses. From a store perspective, what other loss can you think about? Sure. Um, what what happens when you don't find an item? Cannibalization might happen. I might go to some other store. 
Before that? Uh, before that? Uh, you, you, you look for the store representative, right? <laughs> you, you try to see, do I see anybody in store uniform trying to, trying to help me? Now these guys are paid, right? Uh, store representatives are paid by the store. They should be spending their time not helping with customer out of stock, but they should be in, uh, spending their time in increasing their sto store sales. Now, that's, that's uh, on an average, uh, one employee spent six minutes trying to help somebody locate an out of stock item. Now, within the store, there are two kinds of out of stocks I would like to talk about. One is the shelf out of stock, and one is the store out of stock. Now, many times, 25% uh, of the times, the item is there in the stock. It's just that it's either not on the shelf or it's misplaced on the shelf, or somebody uh, has forgotten to put the latest carton on the shelf. Right? All right. So uh, this is the second loss. Okay. Um, second loss is what happens to customer time. I think the most valuable asset is the time customer is spending on the store. Customer has walked in, he's giving you business, and you're wasting his time. Now, how much time we're really wasting? About half an hour. Uh, this is the this is the average. These are uh, numbers got from thousands of uh, people surveyed. Uh, about half an hour is the standard. If I if I have one item out of stock, I spend six minutes. That's twenty percent of my time, and that's not what a store owner really wants. I want twenty percent of the time to be maybe get 10% more items uh, sold, 10% uh, more inventory out, but 10% of the time is, 20% of the time is really spent in out of stock. Um, having worked with some of the large customers, uh, we do see that uh, there are a lot of traditional methods being followed. I mean, could you imagine that uh, somebody, they're still using, some of our customers are still using paper-based models, uh, the uh, sales, advisor kind of walks around the store, makes a ticks on paper, uh, compiles that list into Excel, and uh, that's how uh, the overall monitoring is done. Um, so that's, that's the human-based audit system, okay? Large stores, Costco, uh, Walmart, uh, you have 60, 70 aisles. You'll have to deploy 10, 15 people just to go around, find out of stock. Um, a slightly better way um, is the point of sale. Uh, you see point of sale, uh, you see what is the pattern. You have some historical pattern from the historical pattern you're trying to predict. Uh, when you see, how, how do you figure out of stock? Now, this is two kinds of items that I'm talking about. One is the fast moving items, one is the slow moving items. Fast moving items still, okay, milk. Every morning I'm going to sell 100 cans of milk. Suddenly, one day I don't sell. There's a dip in my sales. So what it means? It may be out of stock that milk people may not be buying. I don't know, I'll know only two days later. Even worse for slow moving items, something like oil, uh, something like detergent, once you take it, you don't take, you don't see that velocity every day. So, uh, from, uh, so AIS, any takes, again, sorry? Yeah, and that's a term I, I coined, <laughs> but thanks for, thanks for getting it. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, so, this is where we are trying to use Apex. Uh, and what, what we're trying to do is real time, we are getting the data, we are getting the point of sale terminals, we are getting when the consignments come into the shop. We are getting, uh, so all this data is there, all this data is maintained, maybe in Excel, maybe in database, maybe in Oracle, maybe uh, 
just um, in disparate data sources. But what we're trying to do is, if we are able to monitor, if we are able to see real time, that's where we'll be able to predict. And we don't want to get into predictions only. This is what we want to do. Point of sale. Uh, what we are able to do with Apex is uh, the initial aggregation of all data, the consumption of all data. <coughs> then we are able to do the split with respect to products. Uh, then uh, we will be able to uh, write our own business logic rules to say that if there is a dip, uh, how easy will it be for a store manager to get a notification like this? much better than going and looking around the aisles, right? Okay, so uh, I think I, uh, I will hand over to my colleague Hardik who will really focus on some of the uh, numbers, the implementations. Sure. Um, yeah. So YX is representing uh, my store operation time that is from morning uh, 10 till uh, evening 7.30 or 8 if my store uh, operation timing. So in the morning if I see that okay uh, in, in beginning uh, half an hour if item is sold only one or two uh, then uh, during afternoon if there is a dip in sale like uh, till, af till noon I was selling ar around uh, 10, 10 uh, items of particular product and if there is a dip and then again uh, in the afternoon uh, I see that increase in sale and sudden a dip. So th this could be a potential out of stocks or uh, the identification for a store manager that uh, he needs to check out that why there is a dip uh, in sale. Uh, so earlier we saw about how we can uh, manage it for a particular I mean single store but how we can operate it across the stores. So let's say we have multiple stores, multiple point of sale uh, across the stores. So all the data uh, coming uh, together for different products being uh, sold. And so we segregate that data and identify uh, sale of individual product. And based on that, I mean, for a single, let's say for a single particular product uh, from the point of sale data, if there is a deep, uh, in sale, maybe uh, for a particular store as well as across the store, uh, we can have a dashboard or alert notification for the store manager, even for the business operational uh, person to get notified that in a particular store, sale of particular product is being deep by certain percent of time, uh, by a certain percent in a certain period of time. So this is the point where they can uh, get started on the operations. Yeah, <clears throat> the other point is, I mean, earlier we saw was the real time. I mean, uh, where uh, for the store operation timings, I mean, it was a daily uh, minute by minute or even I'd say uh, second by second real time data monitoring. But where Apex will help is uh, to compare uh, trends with the historical data as well. So here the y-axis represents the number of uh, items being sold uh, over the year and, and so y -axis x-axis represents uh, history for entire year, I mean from 1st Jan to 31st uh, December. So these two blue and green lines are uh, my sale for a particular product for last two years and the red one indicates the sale of particular product for my current year. So maybe here you can consider that uh, this can be uh, example of any seasonal product maybe consider a coke that during summer time uh, maybe sale of your uh, sale of coke might increase and we are also not sure that when summer will start for 2015 maybe you can consider that it was started somewhere around in april but for 2016 it was somewhere in march and even it's not a pro uh, kind of product where sale will only uh, be increased in uh, summer i mean yeah it will increase in summer but it's not that, I mean, we'll see a drastical dip in sale for Coke. I mean, people used to buy it, I mean, uh, for entire year as well. So, but yeah, some, some graph represents that, okay, during summertime, it will uh, increase the sale. 
but if I see a sudden dip uh, in my cell, then I can consider that as why that particular cell is dipping. Maybe it can be out of stock or uh, some manufacturing fault in the product itself. So that can be a uh, trigger alarm for uh, operationals. Uh, and just want to mention that uh, with Apex, we are able to overlay the historical with the real time. Uh, and that's why, uh, you know, not only relying on the trends, but even going for the real time with historical. Thank you. Okay. So, okay, daily sales data across all stores. Uh, this is again can be considered for a single uh, particular SKU or a product. So, the y axis representing number of item sold for throughout the year uh, and where I see a seasonal dip in sales, uh, maybe that can be uh, good for uh, store operational ma store manager or operational persons to uh, have a look at uh, why, why there is a dip uh, in sale. Yeah. So this one is the category. This one, what we've tried to, try to do is, uh, this is one category. Uh, let's say uh, one FMCG category that we're talking about. Let's say uh, drinks. Uh, let's let's say fizz drinks or any uh, consumer drinks. Um, and next, what we're trying to do is really split it up and trying to overlay the category to the individual brands. Yep. So yeah, maybe let's say I mean uh, different categories. Maybe you can take example of Coke, Pepsi, uh, Red Bull, or maybe any health drinks. So if I see a trend uh, where for entire year from Jan to uh, December, <coughs> let's say sell of uh, Coke, I mean, uh, there is a dip in that particular thing, wherein let's say health drinks were started a little low, but I see there is an increase in sell uh, at certain point of time. So that can be a point where, I mean, uh, store inventory or warehouses uh, may think of uh, maintaining their warehouses and inventory. So maybe when, when, when they see, okay, there is a dip in uh, sale of Coke and there is an increase in sale of health drinks, maybe they can take a decision that what particular product they need to uh, ask more uh, from suppliers and what, 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 what are the products they need to keep less in the inventory, right? So this is where uh, uh, they'll get, <coughs> okay. So more or less, I mean, uh, we talk about what, what are the uh, problems uh, with the retail stores, uh, how we can overcome that, and the main uh, why with the Apex. Uh, anyone in the audience can guess why with the Apex? Not the data torrent people, please. True. So first, yeah. So first, I'll ask like, what are the traditional methods or patterns uh, we are currently maybe operating on, or what are the traditional uh, ways currently maybe let's say store will be relying on for solving this problem. Yeah, so maybe it could be uh, RDBMS or any uh, existing, maybe they are maintaining in Excel or something, right? So it's hard, uh, I mean, to, let's say if you have data for 2015, 16, over the years, right? I mean, if you query uh, in using RDBMS as well, right, for uh, historical data, the results might be uh, not, I mean, you, you won't get, I mean, you won't be able to compare it with real time. You'll get the data when you fire a query on SQL or something, but you won't be able to compare it with real time data, right? What is live coming live? So, uh, yeah, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but uh, what we are seeing is we need a lot of aggregations. We, we need a lot of um, uh, slicing and dicing of this data. Now, uh, what we're able to do with Apex is really have these aggregations done runtime as well. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I do, there are a lot of experts who know a lot more than I do, but 
um, that that's where I think we see the cl clear winner that instead of going to an OLAP cube, instead of having your star schema, um, doing the aggregation in an overnight batch, uh, we're able to do uh, that real time. And we will be able to show real time trends, uh, even slicing, dicing across stores, across geographies um, with with Apex. Uh, and that's, that's what we think will be really uh, the powerful factor. Okay, so this is about the implementation part uh, using Apex. So how we'll be able to uh, fit Apex in the current system. So maybe you can consider this block as the uh, existing system, existing model they'll be having where all the point of sale data will be coming from across the stores, right? Uh, so yeah, maybe you can consider that data is residing somewhere here uh, with the existing system. Uh, then using Kafka, where we can have a pub sub mechanism. Uh, so maybe we can have certain topics based on that. Uh, so this is the Apex ecosystem where all the existing operators from Malhar library uh, will be able to uh, solve this particular problem. So using Kafka cluster, we'll be able to uh, provide the input to Kafka operator. Uh, then the parser, then deduplicator, where deduplicator will be helping us, let's say if some point of sale are uh, providing duplicate bills in, in, in certain uh, fraction of time, then deduplicator will be able to uh, remove the duplicate bills. Uh, then dimension computation will be able to help uh, uh, divide, I mean segregate data based on either, let's say if you want to look for a particular product, if you want to go for a particular store, or maybe let's say some uh, point of sale representative. So, uh, that we can do uh, business logic here in dimension computation. Uh, then store will actually be able to uh, uh, help, I mean store will be able to help storing data in HDFS. So here what I mean capabilities we get is uh, instead of storing data, uh, huge data I mean uh, entirely so uh, in HDFS dimension computation helps us to save uh, data uh, per minute, per hour, per day per week, month, year. So that way when, uh, let's say when, when we go for a dashboard or uh, actual business logic to get the real time data. So data is distributed among minute, uh, day, uh, minute, hour, seconds and uh, day. So that way it will be easier for, I mean quicker for dashboards and uh, business operations to uh, get the data back from HDFS. So there can be two different solution. One uh, where can uh, business operation persons can uh, see the real traffic on uh, DT dashboard itself. And the other solution can be uh, alert where a store operational person directly store manager will be able to receive uh, mobile alerts or mails or SMS or mobile notifications directly on their uh, device about uh, OS or uh, the other, I mean, depending on what business logic we have. Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, it from us. Uh, we would love to answer any questions, comments uh, on this.